I'm here with some of the largest organisms to have ever existed on our planet. Despite not being able to talk, they can communicate with one another, and despite not moving around, they've been in existence for over 350 million years. What are these giant, amazing, mysterious organisms? Why, they're trees! Trees are some of the largest organisms that exist on Earth today. They are woody, vascular plants, consisting of a single stem or trunk, and can grow to considerable heights. How tall can a tree grow? Well, here in Pennsylvania, the eastern white pine and the tulip poplar both hold the record as being the tallest trees. Both have been recorded growing 60 meters or 200 feet or more. How tall is that? That's about eight houses stacked upright. But that's not the largest tree you can find. Travel to California and you'll find the coastal redwood, which has been recorded growing 300 feet or more. But trees aren't the only woody vascular plants that exist. A shrub is also a woody plant, though of considerably less height. Typically multi-stem, that leads them to be more rounded in appearance than compared to trees. The mountain laurel, Pennsylvania's state flower, is actually a shrub. Both trees and shrubs are vascular plants. And by that, we mean they have a special set of cells that transport both water and nutrients throughout the plant. The xylem transports water and nutrients from the soil and the roots to the canopy of the tree where the leaves do photosynthesis. The tree have a separate set of cells known as the phloem, which move the food produced during photosynthesis throughout the rest of the tree. If you take a close up look at a piece of old dead wood, you can inspect these special cells and straws for yourself. Unlike animals, plants don't have a heart to move water and food around. So how do they get nutrients and water from one place to another? This is through a process called capillary action. Take a paper towel and dip a small piece of it into a cup of water. What happens? You should see that the water moves upwards through the paper towel. This is actually what you want in a paper towel. This is because the systems that work in a living plant also move the water up through a paper towel. Trees and shrubs are both perennial plants, meaning they have a growing season and a more dormant season. Here in the forest of Pennsylvania, we see these seasonal changes as annual growth rings. The lighter areas here were where conditions for growth were good. This is the spring when water and nutrients are both readily available. As the seasons change and both these resources become less apparent or less available, the cells become smaller and more tightly packed, creating a hard edge boundary at the edge of this growth ring. When the powers of trees and shrubs combine, we find ourselves in a wondrous place known as the forest. Forests of all kinds make up the majority of the land cover on Earth. However, this number is shrinking dramatically. In just over 300 years, 30% of our forests have disappeared. Humans have cleared this land to make way for more farmland, both for crop growing as well as animal grazing. In all of this forest space, from the roots all the way to the leafy tops can be divided into sections or layers. Think of it like the floors of a house. Each layer serves an important role for both the tree as well as the environment it's a part of. Beginning below the ground, we have the subfloor. This is where we find the tree's roots. The roots anchor the tree and the soil in place as well as allow for the water and nutrients in the soil to be brought to the tree to be transported to the leaves. Science has also shown us that trees have teamed up with soil fungus at their roots to make this nutrient uptake more efficient. Trees also use this network to communicate with one another. They can send both chemical and electrical messages as well as share resources and food. The forest floor is the main area that we interact with, as it's the area that you, me, and many other organisms live. It consists of the shrubby underlayer here, as well as many tree trunks. The understory is the next layer of the forest. It consists of the low branches before you reach the dense leafy layer that is the canopy. Here you'll find some of your favorite creatures, such as insects, birds, and squirrels. The last layer of the forest is the canopy. It consists of the leaves because that's where most of the sunlight is. And it's the area where the tree undergoes photosynthesis 
producing all the food it needs to grow so big and tall. Trees are greatly beneficial to both humans and the environment. Recently, people have been talking about the tree's ability to remove carbon from the atmosphere. This is done through the process of photosynthesis. In addition, trees provide shade, cooling the land around them. The roots help hold the soil in place, reduce water runoff and pollution during major storm events, and they provide both food and shelter to a variety of organisms throughout their lives. Trees have even been shown to help patients recover faster from surgeries and they help keep us grounded and calm. To make sure you get all the benefits that trees have to offer, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you focus on planting native trees. What's a native tree? It's a tree that's existed in an area since before the Europeans came over. Why is that? The local wildlife recognizes it as an excellent resource for both food and shelter. Imagine that you're presented with two different meals. One plate, you have a burger and fry, and the other, a strange looking but foreign delicacy. Which meal are you gonna go for? Probably the burger and fry. Why? Because it's a meal that you recognize as both delicious and nutritious. According to scientist and researcher, Dr. Doug Talame, a single oak tree can host over 500 different species of caterpillar. The number of species that a tree, a single tree can influence only increases as we factor in the birds and mammals that feed on both those caterpillars as well as the nuts and seeds that the trees produce. I hope you've enjoyed exploring the various parts of the forest and trees with us today. To continue learning about our native forests and trees on your own, check out our activity guide, available both at the Visitor Center as well as our website. Remember to bring the activity guide with you the next time you visit the preserve as some of those activities are intended to be done here. I want to thank you all again for joining us today and remember to keep on experiencing what's natural and learn what's native.